Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to show you how to fix your Keurig K-Cafe Smart Coffee Maker. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do before you start working on this is you're going to unplug it and you're going to leave it unplugged. So is your coffee maker dead and there's no power? This may have happened after, after a descale. It's got a thermostat in there that we're going to reset. So let's take the milk frother away. So I want to show you, I'm going to show you what we're going to reset. Then I'm, I took it apart already. It's, it's a little tricky to take apart. And then I'm going to show you how to take it apart and put it back together. Okay, so here's the heating element out of another Case Supreme coffee maker. This one has the exact same heating element. And if we look, there's an overheat thermostat on, on this one. It's on that one also. So what happens is if your coffee maker runs dry, this is the heating element. Water comes in and it goes out, it gets heated up. But if it goes dry, it could heat up and it trips that thermostat. And then it kills power to the whole machine. The machine's dead. But we can reset it with a little paper clip right in there. Now you can check yours, get an ohm meter and check for ohms between here and here now. And um, you should have a zero continuity. And then you can watch as you reset. Now I've got continuity of mine. I've reset this one already. But when you press that button in the middle, you'll get continuity again. Okay, so let's look on the right hand side of the coffee maker. If we look down in there, there's that thermostat right there. So if you get yourself a really long paper clip, and stick it in there and you can reset that thermostat right there in the middle. You're gonna press that button. You may hear a little click, like a click, but it doesn't take a whole lot. Press right there in the middle and that will reset it. So while we got it open, we'll just take a look. Looks like we got a water pump, we got an air pump. There's our low water sensor. Um, we've got like two chambers water comes up in. So I'll explain how the low water sensor works so you got two tubes going to this reservoir. And as the water reservoir is on there, water is going to go into two tubes. One tube goes right to the water pump and it sucks and, and puts, it, puts it into your K-cup. The other one is for like this little box and it goes to a vent tube so that the water can raise up and down in there. That's going to give you your low water light. And there's a vent up here. So this tube right here, this is the low water. These are your low water sensor wires. This tube right up here goes to a vent right there. And if you look at this tube, it's just an opening right here. So you may, if your low water sensor is not working, you may have like a bug or something that got in there and kind of covered that up. Here's the water pump and there is an air pump on the other side. It only has one line. Okay, so let me explain the disassembly. You are gonna have to take these screws out. So on the bottom, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I took all six of these screws kind of in this circle right here. These other screws you don't have to take out, but in this kind of circle right here I did. Once you take those out, now before you have the covers off, that does allow the coffee maker to lift out of there, but it's only going to lift so high. You've got water tubes that are attached and wires. So you're, you do need to lift it up out of this tray, but it's going to be limited on how far you can get it up. Okay, so it is going to be hard to take apart. I'll tell you that right now. You do need some kind of like automotive tools for prying. Um, I did use a screwdriver. I did break a couple pins. But when yours is together, the primary goal is you're gonna have to get this top piece off. Now, it's got these tabs and there's like one right here. There's one in the back, but you've got to get this part off and it lifts straight up. And I'll kind of explain that. Again, there's tabs here but it kind of fits right in there. There's really no, don't pry up here. You can't get this trim off, but you got to get from the trim up. Once this piece is off, and again, it was on there really good. Now this back piece, it can slide up because it's got these, it's got these that have to slide up. See how there's a notch for them to slide up on one side. I broke all the pins on one side, but I think it's going to be okay. But that, this piece has to slide up. Then you're going to take this piece off it's gonna rotate kind of from the bottom. These pins actually come apart pretty easy. Lift the lid up and it kind of rotates off like this, kind of like it's on there and then it's gonna rotate off like this. And to get this off, you do have to have it up out of that. Now I'm gonna reassemble it in the reverse order. I'm gonna put this on, then this on, this back piece, then I'm gonna snap this on the top. Okay, so just bear with me here, it's gonna be Again, you gotta be really careful. This
These are not designed to come apart. They don't want you taking them apart. There. See how this slides in? Then I'm gonna snap the sides. Okay, so that went together a little better than I thought. Make sure this is all flush. It's flush down here. Okay, now you're gonna come around back. You're gonna slide this on. Line up those tabs, and it should slide on and kind of snap. It goes together real easy. Okay, so now this part up here, we gotta snap this on. So there's how it fits. Yeah, it goes together super easy. But getting this part off was really tricky. Okay, so I'm gonna put all my screws in. These are just number two Phillips screws. Okay, so I've got it all back together. Now I'm gonna go plug it in. Okay, so I plugged it in, it powers up right away, but there's a trick. I wanna show you a trick of priming the pump. Okay, so before you press the brew button, fill your water reservoir all the way up, and we're gonna put it on and off several times. So your thermostat may have tripped because you accidentally ran it dry. So say you removed the water reservoir while it was brewing or something happened that the add water light didn't come on and your, your um, machine ran dry or even during a descale, sometimes they overheat. This is a really nice trick of priming the pump. Take it on and off. Oh, I like to do it about 10 times. What that's gonna do is that's gonna push some water through the machine and get it into that heating element so that when you turn the machine on, that heating element isn't dry. That heating element needs water in it. And it kind of primes the pump. Your pump may have been dry. Again. Okay, so now let's just do a fresh water rinse. I don't have a K-cup in there at all. Yeah, just do a fresh water rinse. Do six ounces. Now you may, if this thing ran dry, you may get a big puff of steam through here and it may kind of sound funny and you may not get much water at all, but that's okay. The next brew, the next fresh water rinse will be okay. Okay, so I've got this one back up and running and it looks like it's working really good. I think there's an important step when you're descaling it, letting it rest for 30 minutes. Check out that video. I've got a video on how to descale this with the Keurig descaling solution and the vinegar. You can use either one, but there is a, in between the, descale and the fresh water rinses, you do want to let it rest for 30 minutes. It kind of lets that heating element cool down. So I hope this video helps. Thanks everybody for watching.